Oh, there's a big one. Got him. Here he comes. Look at him. Beautiful in the light like this. T-boned. Nice. Wow, what a beautiful fish. This is medium power spinning equipment at minimum. Here he comes. Look at him. With a good size reel. You know, this is a size 30 spooled to the max with braid, eight pound suffix 832 to a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader because you got to pull on these fish. All right, guys, I'm going to grab the net on this, this guy. This is an important tool when you're doing trouble baits in a river. <clears throat> easier on the fish, easier on you. Look at that guy, just a beautiful smallmouth. Beautiful river smallie. Let's get her unhooked real quick. Get a little light on her for you. Pretty, huh? Just a nice river run smallmouth summertime, going into early fall actually. And the, the fish are still eating really good. They're at peak metabolism. Pretty fun program today. Water level is up pretty high for this time of year. And what Kyle and I have found is that that's brought a lot of the fish up on the bank. You know, when we're dealing with a summer pool or when water is drawn down a lot, you'll get fish set up out in this main river on rocks and lay downs and behind riffles and sand dunes. But right now they're tight to the bank. And we're covering river miles, so we're fishing horizontal baits. We wanna move pretty swiftly, locate fish, and then if we locate fish, we'll switch up to you know more of a bottom-based presentation. But our bait of choice today has been a buoyant minnow profile bait, not a jerk bait. And the reason for that is we're doing a lot of target casting around both grass and lay down trees, stumps, any available hard cover. And what the balsa bait allows you to do is when you come up on that type of cover, just kill it. And that Rapala original floater pops up real quickly. So it's not, even, it's not a slow rise. It doesn't suspend like a traditional jerk bait does. It comes up quickly. But the big deal is you need that buoyancy so you can float it over cover. It allows you to get the bait into places that you otherwise wouldn't. Because if I had a jerk bait on right now, I'd get it down to two, three, four foot in depth. I'd have to high stick it to get it out of there because it would stay at that same depth and be more susceptible to snagging. So river, cover, a, a buoyant floating minnow plug, and it has a real subtle little wiggle. So it's not a really erratic style like you'd get out of a jerk bait. It's more of a nice little subtle minnow, minnow profile, minnow wiggle. And when I twitch it, the bait just has nice little more muted moves which I think on a day like today where the fish have been pretty inactive overall, we're still able to get some bites on a horizontal bait. You know, and there's, there's a reason I'm fishing this bright fluorescent orange. You may not think that that's a great match to the hatch color, but smallmouth are a curious fish, so bright gaudy colors oftentimes attract them. But in this dirty water, in this river scenario, I think it stands out pretty good. I mean, it, I want to watch that bait. I want to see how I'm working it. I want to see it in relation to the cover that I'm targeting. And a bright bait allows you to do that. Gold has also been a really good river color for me. That one really mimics a lot of the river forage, chubs and dace and shiner minnows, whatever. The nice thing too with a, a balsa bait, it's, it's a lighter bait, but the entry is real soft. And a lot of these fish are sitting, you know, two, three, four inches from the shore. So the bait has a real gentle drop in. You don't spook fish that much. And a lot of times you'll have them wake over to the bait. They'll, they'll sense that subtle entry that's not real noisy. It doesn't make a big splash. It's just the right amount. And then they'll come and eat it right on the top. Well, I can probably fish this on bait casting gear. Generally speaking, you're gonna have more success with spinning tackle. Certainly your casting distance is gonna be far better. And I'm fishing this with an eight pound braided main line, again, to enhance casting distance. And then I have a floral carbon leader and 10 pound test for both invisibility and then shock absorption as much as anything, just because these are pretty light wire hooks. I definitely prefer a braided main line for casting distance. I'll keep this reel spooled with the same line for two, three, maybe even four years. So from a value standpoint, the braid is awesome. It actually gets better over time, seems like, the more you fish it, the more supple it gets, which means better casting distance and overall handling characteristics. And then 
just you know change out your fluorocarbon leader based on the presentation. This is 10 pound suffix advanced fluorocarbon. You know, eight's gonna be a little under gun dealing with these tough river fish around cover. And then a you know medium power rod with a little bit of length. This is a seven foot one medium power. Let's you launch that bait out there and then gives you you know the fish fighting power you need and then your ability to work that bait effectively. This happens to be 13 Fishing's Omen. Just a nice solid rod for the money. It does a lot of different things well. I mean, I'll rig this same rod up with a wacky rig if I think they're on plastics or Kyle's little tiny child setup, which is one of our favorite river finesse setups. We'll link to that in the video description. And not to mention the drag that you get with spinning gear. This is a lighter line tactic. So eight pound braid to a 10 pound floral leader, or maybe you're fishing 10 or 15 pound braid to a floral carbon leader. It's still light line, so you can't go wrong having a, a quality reel that gives you the smooth drag that only a spinning reel can provide. What I like too on that braid as I'm fishing that bait right now, again, I, I like the positive feedback I get from a fluorescent lure. Look at that. Like I'm watching it, so it's real cause and effect for me, but with braid, I don't need to move that rod tip too much to impart action on that bait. Same thing on a hook set. All I basically do is reel down and then the, kind of load up on the rod, and that drives those hooks home no problem. Oh, there, there's one. Nice. Spot lock. I like seeing that fluorescent come up from the depths. Classic. Pretty little river smallmouth, not a big one. And when I go, go into the spot lock, I'm just dragging that fish up current, so I usually run to the back of the boat Real, realistically, the net net is the best tool here. I'll, I'll pull that out for the next one. But nice light hook job with those fine wire VMC hooks. So he's no worse for the wear. Cool. We're just gonna hop back on the bow and keep moving down current. Now, if I'm in a low water scenario where this river drops quite a bit and there's big rock slash gravel flats or grass beds out main river channel, the bait works great as well. I'm gonna just cover those areas horizontally. So now I'm target casting, but it works great on those flats. Just, it's just a minnow cruising over the top of that cover. And then I've been dropping waypoints whenever we contact a fish. So that gives me a little bit of reference for if I wanna come back and target fish in that area again, or even later that this year or even down the down the road usually these fish will set up on similar spots or the same spots annually so you just build a good milk run of summer spots if you're just starting to consume fishing content you see a lot of media built around the newest innovations and in tackle the latest and greatest and you know that's just part of the business cycle you got to put marketing dollars behind new product launches but it's also important to get a sense on what those iconic baits have been over time. And this minnow bait is, is right up there at the top of the list. All time greats just for its fish catching ability, the original floater. So just because it's been around for a long time doesn't mean that it's not effective. And this applies to all categories of lures. If you find a company that you like their products, definitely make sure you go back and take a hard look at their overall product line do some reading online, older articles, you know, fishing shows that are now digital that you can watch on YouTube, whatever, um, and find out what those legendary baits are. And, and have a few in your box and learn when and where to use them. Because as is often the case too, anglers are gonna be fishing the newest stuff. You know, everybody likes to stay on top of trends when it comes to tactics and fish, you know, not being conditioned to baits. But what you'll often find is they're not conditioned to the oldies just because they're being underutilized. They're not getting the, the press, if you will. So, you know, and balsa never goes out of style, whether it's a flat sided crankbait or a deep diving crankbait or a minnow plug, the properties inherent to the material just make it awesome for fishing. You know, the built in buoyancy and most importantly, the action. So we have a lot of fun fishing this style of bait everywhere for all kinds of different species of fish. You know, for this river program, number one, trolling motor and the advent of GPS and the head of these trolling motors to anchor them essentially is invaluable in the river. So you can step off and go make really nice targeted casts and use the full length of the boat to really work over an area without blowing through the spot. 
So you can see right now I'm spot locked. The boat's totally anchored in place. The water flow really, really locks it. I'm not moving even an inch as I look at the shore right now. So that's a huge tool. And as far as electronics, this isn't a huge electronics game because today we're casting the bank, but that doesn't mean I don't like knowing what the bottom composition is, especially with smallmouth. When I get in those hard bottom areas, those seem to be the most productive. So I'm constantly looking at my 360 imaging to get a sense on what the bottom is. And right now, if you would take a look at it, you'll see there's nice fist sized rocks, baseball sized rocks, and a few bigger scattered boulders around. So I know I'm in a good zone. You know, smallmouth like eating crayfish. You're gonna have crayfish in these areas. It's gonna be a little bit cooler water. They're just overall productive zones for what we're doing here today. So the 360 imaging is nice. I can make quick casts based on what I see on the bottom. So if I look down and I see a big boulder out here at one o'clock, I'll make that cast. Maybe I'll get bit, maybe not, but over the course of a day, you end up making more high percentage casts than if you don't have it. And no mapping out here. So essentially I'm using the 360 imaging as my map, literally of what's around the boat at any given time. When I'm spot locked with 360 too, the, the nice thing is the boat's not moving. So that picture stays real consistent. Those rocks remain in the same place. There's my, the edge of the actual river bank. So I, I can make just real, real accurate casts to specific areas. River fish do move quite a bit, so it's just good to have those waypoints as reference and over time and over the seasons and based on water level, you start to get a better sense on you know where fish are gonna be. And then being able to link that to, okay, what's the bottom look like? Clearly I can see what's with my eyes above water, the type of cover on the bank, but the 360 gives you that underwater view really clearly as to what's on the bottom. One quick rigging tip when you're fishing a delicate or kind of a subtle minnow plug like this, particularly balsa, this thing has a nice subtle wiggle, but if I tie my knot direct, that can kind of impede the action, especially with heavier lines. So you wanna do one of two things. You wanna use either a loop knot tied to this eye, or you wanna use a snap. Now both work fine. I prefer a snap for two different reasons. Number one is my line to the snap connection is gonna be a stronger knot than what that loop knot's gonna be. I'm always gonna wanna use the best knot I can. And then secondly, I want the option to be able to quickly switch out both sizes and then colors of bait so I can keep experimenting. I don't wanna get lazy and have retying a different knot prevent me from changing out colors.